better known as the Night Stalker, will ask the uh, state Supreme Court to set aside his death sentence since they believe he was represented by incompetent counsel. In 1989, Ramirez was found guilty of 13 counts of murder, five attempted murders, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. Attorney Michael Cardoso joins me this morning. Nice to have you here. Thanks. Before we talk about this challenge to the court, sure. give us a little more background on this guy. Well, th they say it started when his cousin, I believe it was, from Vietnam, came back from Vietnam, showed him gory pictures of how he had killed people. Then apparently he killed his own wife in front of Ramirez, blood spattered all over Ramirez. Apparently that affected him psychologically. And off he goes to kill people. And as you just said, there were 13 murders, and they were brutal murders, mostly in Southern California, although he did one up here in San Francisco. He was finally caught in East Los Angeles where he was trying to steal a car. And at that time, a lot of East Los Angeles uh, people saw him, recognized him, jumped him and started to beat him. They say that the police had to stop them because they nigh on killed him there. And I would imagine a lot of people wondered why the police came to his aid. He was, uh, we all know him as the Night Stalker. Wasn't he originally known as like the walk-in The walk-in, because he would just walk into people's homes. And they were usually elderly people, 65 to say 75 years old. He'd walk in, he'd shoot the man in the head, and then he'd start to molest the wife and just do atrocious things to them. And in a couple situations, one husband who was shot in the head was able to dial 911 to save his own wife's life, although he expired shortly thereafter. So why is he taking so long? He's been in prison since when? 89? 80, 88, 89, yeah. right, when he was why convicted. Why is he taking so long to challenge the court on this death sentence? Death penalty case, California, the average is 20 years yeah. here in California. So that's, that's why, and remember, the trial took over a year. I mean, you had two attorneys that are the focal point of this appeal. And so why does he say they were incompetent? Why does he say? Because it's a great ground for appeal. It's really his appeal attorneys that are saying they are incompetent. But the big thing is these two attorneys, both named Hernandez, not related, had combined five years total experience as lawyers, let alone never having tried a death penalty case. But remember, here in California, you can hire any lawyer. You can hire anybody you want, whether they have experience or not in death penalty cases. If they're appointed by the court, then they have regulations, and it's, and it's better regulated here in California, where those attorneys have to have experience. But the five years or, or not, these two were, uh, I mean, they had been, uh, uh, what, what is it, down in Santa Clara, they weren't showing up? Oh, they weren't showing up for some of the, uh, the court. They missed a big part of the trial. Well, they, they missed a huge part of the trial. One told the judge, look, I've got to go to Mexico to go to my brother's funeral, when in fact he was in Europe honeymoon and he had just gotten married. So you can imagine lying to the court. That got him held in contempt. But with that, it sort of gives you the type of attorneys they were. I know one of them has passed away. One of them is still practicing law. But for them to step into a case like this is just mind-boggling to me. But wasn't there a, a, a judge, I believe, down in Los Angeles who warned Ramirez or that, that they were incompetent lawyers at the time and he the did. family decided to keep these lawyers? Remember, the difference is you hire a lawyer, you can pick whoever you want. The judge can only tell you, look, he doesn't have the experience. Neither one of them had the experience to try it. You better reconsider. You better hire somebody with experience. If the family and Ramirez says, no, this is who we want, then you move so forward So had these it. been court-appointed attorneys, that judge who thought they were incompetent would probably have said, we're changing lawyers. But since they picked them themselves, they can do what they please. That, right on the money. That's yeah, exactly so what happens what's in a case happen like this. Then? You know, it, it is such an egregious case. I think the guilt part of the case where the, he's found... Do the prosecutors have a tight case here? They had a very strong case. I mean, some people didn't remember a lot, but there were a lot of people that came in and specifically identified him and said, I'm positive, that's the guy that shot me or that's the guy that shot and killed my spouse. Do they have any evidence that turned in some good DNA later when we were doing DNA? You know, I don't know if they finally come up with DNA, but since the conviction has stood in this case, I don't think they have to go back and, and do DNA in this case. But what's interesting is, and what they have to worry about, is the death portion of the case. Remember, it's two parts, the guilt phase, and then you go to the death or life without possibility of parole. That's what they'll be looking at. And the incompetence of counsel or deficient uh, lawyering in the case is the one ground that a lot of courts do reverse on. Nevertheless, even if they got rid of the death sentence, he would stay in prison the rest of his life. He would stay for the rest of his life. That, go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say, if they proved these were incompetent, could this turn around on another case? And then we got to go. Susan Polk. 
Yeah, I was, just, I was just thinking about that. You know, there's another case that, I mean, we really have to look at our laws because should she be defending ourselves? I've sat a lot, you know, sat in court in that trial. It is absolutely amazing to think that woman has been allowed to defend herself. But the judge was boxed in under our laws. She had to let her defend herself. But should she? I think we should change our laws in that regard. And in the regards of even if you're privately hired, I think there should be a standard. Because here's what it does. As a lawyer, if I walk in and I'm very, very good at death penalty cases, should I then be incompetent to be sure there's some sort of appeal if I know that, look, there's enough evidence, this guy is going to get convicted. There's no way out of this. So then does an effective counsel become mm. ineffective 